Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to show and tell number 243. So, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we will have two more weeks on Saturday of the 30 day challenge. So, we're going to have the 30 days. Uh, I'm filming this Tuesday of whatever week this is coming out. I, I really ought to start checking the calendar, but I'm filming this on Tuesday. So two days before this is coming out, this coming Saturday, we will have days 21 through 28 of the 30 day challenge. Then we'll have days 29 plus addendum or, or until, uh, I'm having issues with the new Addy machine. We will discuss this as part of my Addy review more. Um, I'm in the process of doing an exchange for the new machine. It is giving me absolute fits, which should not be happening and shouldn't have been happening straight out of the box. I should have returned it immediately, but I was really wanting to keep on my goal. So I've been trying to fight with it and I'm getting a little testy with it. However, do check out this coming Saturday's video because we used a lot of yarn and we'll do counts for that. In my box, I have 13 sets, I believe, as well as some individual pieces, some that match from last week, some that will match from next week. So tons of things here in the box. I still have seven hats downstairs that need to be closed up from this past week. And that's all the finishing work I have left to do from last week's stuff. So I tried really hard to finish as I went this week, but it has been very difficult because it's a lot of finishing work. Uh, this is a lot of hats. Uh, we will definitely go over the goal of 50 hats to donate. I think I'm going to take the first 50 hats that I made, donate those here locally and take the rest from the next week and a half of cranking and stuff and send those to my aunt in Asheville or my cousin in Asheville to either go through their one of their church ministries or to their whatever their like Harvest Hope, Clean of Heart, whatever organization they have up there. Um, a couple of you guys have asked whether or not I was going to be donating to the Mountain Relief Fund. We have done a number of different things to support here in the state where we've had people who had traumatic losses as well as up there. Um, but yes, I do want to get some of these hats and scarves up there as they will have a far more dramatic winter than we will here. Uh, but it will be fewer than what I donate locally. Uh, unfortunately, as far as organizations that I know of who are taking relief items to the mountains, um, the Diocese of Charlotte has been making weekly trips up there to do relief efforts and humanitarian work and their Habitat for Humanity organizations are going up there already to work on helping people rebuild their houses and do repairs. Uh, but I have very limited contacts in Charlotte as as soon as we moved to Charlotte, um, COVID hit and everything closed. And as late as when we moved back to Columbia, uh, a lot of the charities were not accepting donations or people work because of COVID restrictions. So uh, where I was in Mecklenburg County, a lot of the organizations just were not active anymore. Uh, so I never made strong connections and contacts there like I do, like I have here in the Columbia area. As far as Asheville goes, my aunt and my cousins are the only connection that I have to that greater area as far as the work. However, I know Briar Patch Company, and I will leave his website tagged down below, Andrew is working on making hats to donate and distribute locally in Hendersonville. Uh, I know that I think it was Black Mountain Yarn Co. Uh, they have some contacts that they can work through. So uh, I would definitely reach out to just people you know, kind of in the general vicinity, if you were looking for a place to get 
handmade items to people for the purpose of warmth over the winter. Um, yeah. So I have baskets full of things. As with last week, I'm going to try to go through these very quickly. The entertainment portion of this will be very small because we really only focused on one thing this week. And we're off. Oh, I did not write it down. Shucks. I did find the channel last week that made the Haunted House movie recommendations. And it's, it's like Cobweb Chronicles or Cobweb something. I put it in that video. I will try to remember to also put it in this video because a couple of you guys have asked for those recommendations. So. I'm so happy and excited. Let's get cracking on here because, like I said, it's a lot. We have 13 sets plus individual pieces. So, and at the end, I will also include, you know, like the pet tags and the pictures of the finished items laid out and stuff like that. Um, I have not done a final count of what I've made. I will do that at the end of next week. And that will be in the show and tell video for next week, as well as the wrap up portion of the vlogs for the 30 day challenge. Uh, also, I had planned on spending next week getting caught up on my Haunted Hue sock kit. Unfortunately, since I have decided to kind of spend an extra couple of days doing the 30 day challenge to kind of fill in where one Addy died a natural death, one Addy is just not working properly. Um, I might have to save that for my spook your spring make along. I just don't think I'm going to have the socks done in time for Halloween. Uh, speaking of hand knit socks, it is officially hand knit sock season. I do have a pair on today. It is the bubblegum Hermione everyday socks that I made over the summer. So it is finally time for me to stop wear start wearing those uh, handmade socks. I'm very excited. My tootsies are warm. All right, done chit chatting. Let's go. This is going to be kind of difficult, but so this is a Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. It's called Blue Malty. And I did crank a dusty blue hat to match this. This is uh, all of the scarves, but one are 350 rows on the Addy. And I just closed the edge using a slip stitch with my waist um, in yarn. I do put everything onto waist yarn so I don't have to finish it coming off the machine. Um, a number of you guys have been asking about patterns. I really don't use a pattern. I found out how to make tubes and I just kind of have gone with it. I am looking for a sweater tutorial. So if you guys have seen a good sweater tutorial for the Addy or the Centro, hook a girl up. I, I kind of would like at the end of this to maybe make a sweater or a cardigan. So this is Strawberry Jam from I Love This Yarn. Once again, 350 rows. It's just a plain scarf. I'll save that one for the last one in this bin. So we have some ear warmers here. This is uh, 90 rows on, these, on the Addy. This is Red Heart with Love. And I can't remember the name of the color, but it is the leftovers from doing the three blanket tubes I did last week. But there we go. Uh, I used a C closure for that one. This is Aruba C and Red Heart Super Saver, along with Premier Basics Light Gray, C closure, 90 rows. I love this. And we will come back to this a little bit more. Once again, this one is a W closure. And this is a Speckles, I love this yarn, Premier Basics in Lilac and Premier Basic in Aqua, I think. Yeah, that one's different than the Aruba Sea. It's definitely a different one. Uh, this is, I love this yarn in Eggplant, I believe. And it does have a hat downstairs that just needs to be closed up. And this one excites me because this serves two purposes. This is an ear warmer. Once again, using a C closure, this is three skeins of sock weight yarn held 
triple. One is Joanne Sensations in Chili Red, Joanne Sensations in Tan, and Peyton's Croy, and I can't remember the colorway. It's not the red velvet one. It's a different one. But two years ago, I made a scarf, and it has been waiting for a hat. And now, that is a Project UFO project that is done. So I am going to set this. I'm going I'm to take a picture with it and everything, and then it's going to stay up here because we need to circle back to Project UFO by the end of the month. But I did complete another Project UFO set. <laughs> I'm very excited about that because uh, doing this challenge, I have also been failing to keep up with Project UFO. I am hoping November I can really focus on Project UFO, get some of those old projects done, specifically that lemon peel blanket and the hexagon blanket. I'd really like to get those done. I hear a cat walking around up here. So this is Lion Brand's Jeans Yarn in dark denim, top stitch, and this is a reversible set. This is um, 150 rows total for these fold-up brim hats, but this one is done 50 rows in the dark denim, 50 rows in top stitch, and 50 rows in stonewash. So regardless of the direction you want to put the hat, you have the top stitch as the rim. And then we do have a matching, this is an infinity scarf to go with it. And I just did random. It's not entirely random. I used what I had left. So it's all the remaining stone wash, a random section of top stitch, all of the dark denim I had left, and then the remainder of top stitch. I close the tube using the same slip stitch method as I do for the scarves. And then I take the tail and slip stitch the slip stitch shut. So on one side, you just have a nice little seam there. And on the other side, you have a more textured, almost I-cord-esque seam. <coughs> Excuse me. This is I Love This Yarn and Ballet Slipper, 150 rows for the hat. I did a cinch closure on this one. It's really, you can make it, make it reversible, but it doesn't have to be. It's the same thing inside and out. And then we have 350 rows for the scarf. This turned out so lovely. Absolutely lovely. We have both of these are Lion Brands jeans, and it's, I want to say Ruby Slipper, but that doesn't seem right. I don't have a slip for it. I found an extra uh, two balls of this, hand-wound balls. So this came from Erica at the Lopsided Crafter. So there were two hand-wound balls that I found after I'd pulled this to go into the other room to be cranked. So I was able to get two sets. So we've got one air warmer with a C closure. And now that my hands are free, when I say C closure, you fold one side in half, fold the other side in half, and seam them together like this. When I say double W closure, you put the ends together flush, fold it into the shape of a W, and then seam it closed. I do seam two rows, two rows, two rows to close that for the C closure. Generally, I can see to get all four layers of that. But for the W closure, it's a little bit more difficult. But we do have a C closure ear warmer, 90 rows with the C closure, 350 row scarf. Then for this one, we have another ear warmer. And this one has an infinity scarf. So most of the infinity scarves are 200, and 200 to 250 rows. I do them as infinity scarves if, because they're just long enough to double up on your neck. But I didn't have enough to do a full length scarf. I'm trying to maximize the yarn that I have as much as possible. But on something fine like this, 250 rows seems to be perfect for some of the looser, heavier weight yarns. That make longer scarves automatically. 
I do do around 200 rows, but that one's not an exact science. It's as long as I have enough to be able to double wrap the infinity scarf so it can stay close to the neck, but I don't have enough for a 350 row scarf. Um, we kind of have like a huge group of duplicates, hits, so I'm trying to get all the individual things out first. All right, so back to the speckle set. So this is a speckle set. We have a hat. Once again, I did the 50 in the Aruba or Premier Basics in Aqua, 50 in the speckles and 50 in lilac. This one is a fully reversible set. The scarf, I did 50 rows in one of the colors, 25 rows in the speckle. I only had one skein of the speckle, so I was trying to maximize the usage of the speckle across the set and still ended up with enough extra to do an ear warmer. When I did the color block on the ear warmer, I did 15 rows speckle, 30 rows in each of the two colors, and then 15 rows of the speckle, so the, the speckle stayed in the center. I forgot to mention that. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but somebody who's out there blowing their horn. So this is another, I love this yarn. This is Robin's something. It's a Prince yarn. I had a bunch of this. So we, we I think last week had one of the full length scarves. We also have two hats downstairs. So we have an ear warmer, 90 rows, C closure. And we have a full length, <clears throat> 350 row scarf. I, once again, love how this patterned up. This looks fantastic as a set. Um, up next. So I can't remember the name of this yarn. It's like pink, aqua, purple, multi or something like that. But we do have two sets with this. So we have an ear warmer. And then we have a 350 row scarf. Once again, the self-patterning yarns just make this so easy. They make the sets dynamic without me having to cut yarn and tie off constantly or have other ends to weave in. So we have a second ear warmer and a second full length scarf. And now onto the similar things. So when you watch Saturday's video, you'll actually once again see my process as I'm thinking my way through things. I had originally planned on taking the I Love This Yarn and Royal and making blanket tubes out of it. I was going to do 350 row blanket tubes. I have one stepson who's like six foot, just over six foot. And then I have two that are just shy of six foot. So I was like, okay, with the blue, I could easily, you know, I have enough to go around. But I decided keeping on the donations was a better usage of my time right now. So I did have one that I added gray to the hat. And we have a full length 350 row scarf. I just turned those blanket tubes into scarves. We have a all blue hat with an all blue scarf. And for these, I used the box closure or the X closure, depending on which tutorial you are following. We have another box closure, fold up brim hat, 350 row scarf box hat, <laughs> 350 row scarf. And then finally, I'm not sure what I did or why I did this, but I accidentally had a 300 row tube and I'm going to pair that with an ear warmer. So uh, more than likely, ladies will be choosing ear warmers, not hats. So a slightly shorter scarf with an ear warmer makes that less of an issue. So I'll make sure that those get bundled together to make sure that those stay together. So that is all the hats and scarves. <laughs> that is a lot of hats and scarves. There are gonna be a lot of very warm people this winter and I am very excited about this. So finally, 
I can't remember if these are from last week or this week. I'll have to check my pictures, but I still have granny squares and corner to corner squares in my bin. I think I finished these while I was editing last week. So I think these are for this week. So this is an I love this yarn or not. I love impeccable and impeccable. I can't remember the name of the orange, but the brown is taupe. And then we have one straight granny square in orange. And then we have a corner to corner square. So this was a um, loops and thread impeccable. And this is Pound of Love from Lion Brand. Um, these all go into just scrappy blankets. Hopefully next year I'll have five or six scrappy blankets to donate. Uh, this year I haven't had as many granny squares because the whole thing started from cranking two years ago. I was cranking all these hats and scarves and had all these small balls left over. Well, right now is my goal is to just use as much yarn as possible. I have a ton of scraps now. So over the next year, we will definitely have far more granny squares and corner to corner squares that get made. I also have some single skeins that just are not going through either Addy. So I have set those aside to become granny squares or other single skein handmade projects, hand knit or hand crochet projects. Um, so that'll be one of the things I try to focus on for next year. But I'm very excited because there will be a lot of scraps right now. I have one giant tote full of scraps and one small tote that's getting pretty full of scraps. So we'll have lots of granny squares next year. The granny squares are 10 round grannies with a size eye hook. The corner to corner squares are 10 row corner to corners with a size eye hook. It just made it easy to just keep it 10 and 10. But there we go. That is everything and all of my containers of goodness for this week. So if you are not interested in what we watched this week, go ahead and skip ahead to the pet tags and pictures at the end, or uh, I'll see you guys on Saturday. Um, those of you who are interested in what we were watching, we finished the fall of the house of Usher finally. Uh, loved it. Loved it. A uh, little weird. Not going to lie. Uh, a couple of you guys have mentioned not really enjoying horror. So the fall of the house of Usher really isn't horror. It's more suspense, drama, thriller, not horror in the sense of, you know, scary movie, but is very atmospheric. Uh, all of those, I think his name is Michael Flanagan series. Uh, they're, they're just all just palpably environmental. You get sucked into the environment. They're fantastic to watch. Um, having now finished the fall of the house of Usher, I think my order for them would still be Hill house, black mass and follow the house of Usher. Those are really very close. The way they wrapped up black, um, not Black Mass, Midnight Mass. The way they wrapped up Midnight Mass um, just really blew me away. Uh, it was beautiful. It was sad. It was different. I just really enjoyed it. And, uh, oh, what's her name? Last name Gish. She was on X-Files. Annabelle, Annabeth, Annabeth, Gish, her character just, I had feels for her. I had so many feels for her, um, but that was really, really good and just so wholly different. So Midnight, Midnight Mass and Fall of the House of Usher are probably pretty close neck and neck for the number two spot. And then my least favorite would have to be Bly Manor, but it's still really good. So anyway, that's how all that fell out. I'm still listening to a lot of Into the Fog with Peter Laws. I'm still slowly listening to Anna of Cleave. I don't think... I've picked up anything else recently of note. Now, there are some things I'm thinking about watching that uh, 
you're just going back and watching some classics. It's it's been a while since I've watched certain things like uh, the original Friday the Thirteenth. I don't think I've seen for like ten years. Um, I'm not a big once again slasher is not generally my genre. I'm more into the thriller, drama, mystery with paranormal overtones like. Um, I really loved, like, if you watched Crimson Peak, like, that is a really good combination of atmosphere, drama, thriller, and paranormal. So that's really more my vein when it comes to horror. But the original Halloween is just, it was unique. And I, I still love the original Halloween. Um, but it's been a while since I watched Friday the 13th. Earlier this year, I did watch Child's Play, which I had never seen before. So... I'm thinking about going back and watching some of those. And then I know that's going to end up making me watch Scream again, which I, it, that's just a classic. I, I, I mean, <laughs> be still my millennial heart. But yeah, so I, I probably won't watch a whole lot of new to me stuff here over the next week unless we find something really good to watch while we eat dinner. Tomorrow night we have plans, so my day here is probably going to end around 4 o'clock, and Thursday, I'm probably going to have to go to the grocery store, to be honest. So, that, that I've got food for dinner tonight. Maybe I can push it out till Friday, <laughs> do the adulting things on Friday. Uh, it also will depend on what time Amazon delivers the new replacement Addy. Because then I'll have to run the old one, old new one, down to the UPS store. So, yeah, lots of little things, lots of little things. But I do have some really cute banner and Pippin pictures here at the end. So I hope you guys will stay tuned for that. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. And once again, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if there is... I don't know if I mentioned it in the show until last week. I am looking for ideas of maybe some make-alongs that can spice up next year where we really kind of take time each month to focus on different parts of our stash, using our stash. I have a couple of ideas written down and like one of the things I want to kind of do for one of the make-alongs is we all have that project. We have the pattern and the yarn for, but we just haven't started for one reason. Like why I bought this yarn. So make like something like that, or using the oldest yarn out of your stash, or even making yourself use the new yarn into your stash or the good yarn. So uh, give me some ideas down below of what you guys would like to play along with next year. I'd really like to continue making these more interactive things where you guys can join me in trying to focus on these things. And it's not so much just about me and my goals, but we can start incorporating some of your goals in here as well and uh, maybe get a thread going on the Facebook group so we can do more of our project shares. So anyway, let me know what you guys are thinking, what you guys would like to play along with, and I look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Bye, you guys. He doesn't normally play with yarn.